Right, remember how this whole time they told you that you can't take the square root of a negative? They've been lying to you this whole time, okay? It took an Italian back in the day to invent imaginary numbers, okay? Trust me, everybody in this planet is uh, grateful for imaginary numbers. Google it and see all the applications for it. Pretty cool stuff. At any rate, one day he said, you know what? I'm going to be able to take the square root of a negative number. I'm going to make the square root of negative 1 equal to i, i for imaginary number, okay? Then he said this, well, what if I take i and I square it? So i times i is i squared. So that means if I square this, I can just square this. Well, the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 is negative 1. Now, by the way, I don't know if anybody ever told you this. The square root of a happy face times the square root of a happy face is, guess what? A happy face. In other words, the square root of 103 times the square root of 103. You don't need to multiply 103 times 103. It's just 103, okay? That's why square root of negative 1 times square root of negative 1 is negative 1. So let's get rid of this so we're not losing focus. Okay, now he said, well, wait a second. What if I take i times i squared? I'm going to get i cubed. Well, if i squared is negative 1, can't I just take negative 1 times i? Isn't i squared times i, right? i squared is negative 1. So negative 1 times i is negative i. i cubed is now equal to negative i. And then what if we took i squared times i squared to get to i to the fourth? Well, i squared is negative 1, so negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Well, let's keep playing this game. What if we said i to the fifth? Well, isn't i to the fifth the same as i times i to the fourth, right? And i to the fourth is 1, so 1 times i is i. What if we had i to the sixth? Isn't that the same as i to the four times i squared, right? i to the 6, well, i to the 4th is 1, and 1 times, oh, do you see what's happening? I wonder, i to the 7th would be i to the 4 times i to the 3rd, which is 1 times negative i, negative i, and then how about i to the 8th? Well, that's the same as i to the 4 times i to the 4th, so 1 times 1 is 1, and this pattern is just going to repeat itself forever, Okay. That's how, so what you got to do is just remember, memorize this one, and then you could, well, you could either memorize all four of these. I just memorize that and then do what I did, multiply by i, et cetera, et cetera. But let's apply it to some problems. The square root of 9, okay, you used to say no real solution. Now there is a solution, but it's an imaginary solution, okay? So what you could do is break this down like this. If you pull out this negative 1, square root of negative 1, I'm sorry, what's the square root of negative 1? i. And then what's the square root of 9? 3. So my answer is 3i. By the way, you always put the number and then the i. Don't say i3. Okay? How about the next one? Well, what you could do is multiply 3 times 4 is 12. And what's i times i? i squared. So 12 times what is i squared equal to? Negative 1 and we get negative 12. Check this one out, negative six. Well, we have, you know what, let's make this one a little more difficult. Let's square that whole thing, how about that? What is two i squared times two i squared? Wouldn't that be four i to the fourth, right? Two i squared times two i squared, maybe off to the side you might need to see that one. Am I still on the screen, I hope? No. No, well, trust me. 2i squared squared is 4i to the fourth. Negative 6 times 4. What is i to the fourth? Let's zip over here. i to the fourth is 1. So we end up with negative 24. Last one. How about square root of negative 20? Well, we could break this down into negative 4. See, that's a perfect square. I'm going to show you how we could have done this one just a little easier. Negative 4 times 5. Well, negative, if, think about this. If negative 9 was 3i, guess what negative 4 is? Square root of negative 4. 2i and bring down that radical 5. So, leave it up to an Italian to figure out imaginary numbers. That's how it's done.